Right, in this video we're going to look at drawing preliminary orthographic sketches of part 3, the big bottle carrier, right here. We're told some things about it, we're told that the inner diameter is 67 and that it has a wall thickness of 3mm. That's pretty much it. Um, we've got these little pegs right here and they are obviously a certain size and they're far apart and that's going to be determined by what you've drawn in the previous parts as well. Alright, so what I like to do, first thing whenever we get something like this is you've got to try and understand what the shape looks like. So grab a scrap of paper and start to doodle, start to think, well okay, well from the top that's probably a circle. Alright, so in fact let's draw this a little bit neater. I think the view that makes most sense to me with this thing right here is a top view. Because I think that's got the most going on. So a plan view is probably a circle. That's the outside face. And then there's going to be an inside face. And then there's going to be this thing sticking out the side with two little pegs on it. Right, right. and then that means that in a front view, right, and I'm just doodling away. I'm just trying to make sure that everything's right here. And I'm, no I'm noticing sizes. It's told me that it's 67 all the way across here, but it's also told me that it's 75 millimetres tall. So basically, it should, if we're getting proportions right, it should be just slightly taller than it is wide. Alright, so we're working all this kind of stuff out, we're just kind of doodling away. So we've got little things, something like that, and that's something we need to be tricky of. That's actually on a curve. So that little piece will actually come inside a little bit. We need to be aware of that. And that will then define the edge of this big cutout that we've got. Because we've got a big hole in the front of it. Okay, so there's a, there's a bit in this, okay? There's, there's, there's traps in this for us. There's also a hole in the bottom, right? So spend a bit of time with a piece of scrap and try and figure out what's going on. And ask yourself, where do I want to start? And, and to be honest, I think I want to, although I'm going to be doing an end elevation over here somewhere, I think I want to start with that plan view, because I think it's where we determine most of the most of the detail, which we can then transfer across. So, underneath here, I've got a piece of paper. I'm going to be using a pencil and a rubber and a straight edge for my construction lines, and then I'm going to go over my visible outlines using a pen. You don't have to use a pen, you can just lean harder with a pencil, but this is just so the camera can, can pick it up a little better. Alright, so let's start with the plan view. And the plan view is going to be a circle, basically. And as we know, if we're going to draw by hand a perfect circle, then that has to start inside a perfect square. So let's try and get this square drawn like this. We can use, we can use, we can do this. Okay, I think it goes to about there. And we're not allowed to measure anything. We just got to try and work stuff out. Okay, let's find the center of that. This is how we construct a circle. Remember, let's find the center of that. We're kind of drawing a little sort of union flag on here, like this. Make sure our lines are nice and parallel. So, the outside of our circle is going to fit in that space right there. Let's try and draw that. Okay, so, what we do is, to draw this circle, we know that the circle is going to pass through, if we think of these as clock points, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9, we know that it's going to pass through those clock points. It's also going to pass through these diagonals. What I want you to do is, I want you to half the diagonal, there's the halfway point, and I want you to half it again. And the circle is going to pass just underneath that bit that we marked, that's a three-quarter line. Okay, so let's try that just now. So let's go ahead and use nice light pencil strokes. Let's come up and do this circle quadrant by quadrant. Okay, let's half this, half, half again. Okay, and send this down nice and light. Really light on the page. This is possibly even, let's check the camera. No, no, it's turning up, that's okay. Okay, let's half, half and half again. Let's just down here like this. Like that. If 
finally half and half again. Up there just underneath that three quarter mark. Not like that. Okay. So that's us constructed out of the cir the, the outside of the circle. Okay. Now we get this little stick out bit right here. And we're told that it's 30 wide. Alright. We're told that this is 67 on the inside. Plus 3 plus 3 is 73 millimetres across. 30 is just under, just thinking about proportions, 30 is just under half of that. So I think that it probably is probably about that size. About that. Okay. That's a guess. But it's about that. We've got a bit of wall thickness to put in. Let's put in the wall thickness. Let's just follow that circle round like this. Okay. Just trying to keep things proportionately correct. A nice thin wall section. And we've got two pegs there and there. Something like that. That's what's going on. Oh, we've also got a circle in the middle. Right on the bottom surface, we've got this hole. There's a kind of hole there that things can fall through. So we better stick that circle in as well. Let's draw another. Let's draw another box. Straight across the way. Down to there, across. Okay, I'm going a little bit faster now. I'm just kind of freehanding this circle in. Just like that. I think that's all the visible edges. So, what you would do now is you would start to lean a little bit harder so that I can see a difference in your construction lines and your outlines. But just so the camera can pick it up, I've got a pen here. Now, if you used a ruler or a straight edge to do your construction, I want you to do your outlines freehand. So let's go ahead and darken up all the visible lines that we need. So that's just darkening these up and also make sure we do these ones as well. So I'm just going over my lines that I previously constructed. It takes a minute, it takes a steady hand. If you're working with pencil, then you can rub stuff out if if you slip up. But um, I'm working with pen. So that is everything that's visible to us. If we're standing at the top, that's everything that's visible. We've got these enormous holes, these square holes, front and back, mind you. And it looks like the holes... It looks like the holes match exactly with the thickness of the stick out bit. Right, so let's try that. Okay. So, there's a cut, there's a little piece of hidden detail in there and there. Pens away, and then let's carry that across. A little piece of hidden detail there, and then there, like that. Next thing we need to concern ourselves about is centre lines, centre marks. So, let's put little centre marks in. Short dash, gap, long dash, gap, long dash, like this. Um, there are centre marks in there, and there are centre marks in here and there. And I think that's it. I think that's our plan view done. Let's project down and ask ourselves what it looks like from the front. Okay, so I'm going to get the straight edge out again. Not for the purposes of measuring, remember. But I'm going to go ahead, we're going to project all these intersections down, including the size of the hole in the bottom and the centre line. And there. Okay. 
get all these points of interest down the way. And let's stick in a baseline. So my baseline is going to be, let's see it there. Now, 73 I think we worked out across the way and we're told it's 75 high. So it should be slightly taller than it is wide. So 73 takes me to there. So I'm going to make it about that height right there. Let's pop that in. That's the maximum height of it. Where's the centre line? The centre's probably around there somewhere. Okay, just judging that by eye. Alright, let's try and figure out then what we can see from the front. Okay, we're going to be looking straight through this big square hole and through the, the hole at the back, which I assume is the same size. So let's try and figure out what we can see from the front. Well, we've got this little stick out bit, it's going to have a bit of thickness to it. And I should probably project down those things there and out there, like that. Alright, so let's figure out the top of this shape. Top of this shape is a solid line going all the way across. And the bottom of the shape is a solid line going all the way across like this. All the way down the side, like that, and all the way down the side until it hits this little stick out bit. And the little stick out bit proceeds right in until a new construction line. So the little stick out bit actually comes in to there. Okay, and I've got little pegs sticking out the top, and on the drawing. Those little pegs stick out the bottom as well. So we'll stick them out the bottom as well. And cap them off like that. Alright, so far so good. So let's think about this big opening through the front. The opening exactly meshes, exactly touches the stick out bit. And it looks like we've got a it looks like on top we've got a slimmer bit than at the bottom. So let's do that. So there's the bit where it touches. Probably like that, and then we can go across here. You can see I've already taken this line down as well. Okay, so it goes through to there, through to there. We can also see though, let's look at this. We can also see that cut edge. We can see the little slim cut edge down there. Alright, and we know we can see it because we've put it in here as a piece of hidden detail. So let's project that down and project that down there. So we've got a couple of pieces of hidden, we've got a couple of pieces of visible detail, I should say, in there. And there, like that. Alright, wall thicknesses now. Let's see. Okay, so it's that thick which means it's about the same as that there, and it's that thick there. Right, so we've got the inside of this to now worry about. So hidden detail, going down there, going down there. To go right across the bottom. Just like that. And we've got the hole through the bottom as well, so we're going to need a little piece of hidden detail there and there. Alright, so we need our centre lines, everything that's cylindrical needs a centre line through it, long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash, like that, and also through here as well. And I think that's the elevation done. Let's try and do an end elevation now. So projecting across our baseline, like that, project across all these points of interest, all these edges and surfaces, this, the bottom of the stick out bit, the top of the stick out bit, the top of the big square hole, the top of the shape, project all them across like that. And then we need to put in our bounce line somewhere, we need to put in this, this 45 degree bounce line. Um, 
If I put it there, that means that the shape's going to fall into this area right here. That seems about right for me. So I'm going to stick a bounce line up there, like that, 45 degrees, or as, as good as I can guess. Then I'm going to send these lines across to the bounce line center line and the outside of the shape. The width of the stick out bit. The width of that stick out bit there. And then they hit that bounce line and they drop vertically downwards. Just like that. Right. Let's ask ourselves, what can we see? Now basically we're standing over, let's remember what we're doing, we're standing over here looking at the elevation. What can we see? What do we know about? Well, we know that it's got a top edge to it, so we can quite confidently put in a solid top edge and a solid bottom edge to it as well. The sides have got enormous cutouts in them. We can tell where the cutouts are because of this little piece of hidden detail up here. So we need to follow that line down and go, aha, the cutouts come to there. There's one there, let's follow this one along, and there's one right there as well. Okay, and let's go like that to there. So that's pretty much everything we can see. And then the elevation, everything else is going to be invisible to us, I think. Let's start with the little cutout thing, or the little stick out thing right here. So it's going to be represented by a piece of hidden detail that goes across like that and like that because it's on the far side. And also the thickness, the thickness of the thing as well is going to be hidden from us. So let's figure that out. Three mil that's going to be a bit in there and there. And then take that across the bottom. And we've also got a hole through the bottom as well, right there and right there in hidden detail. Well, do you know we've forgotten about those little pegs? Let's bring across the height of those pegs. Those little pegs are at that height there and that height underneath. And their locations are one, two, And let's just bring those locations are there, 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 and there. And those happen to be little hidden details. Just like that. Anything cylindrical gets a centre mark or a centre line, so right down the middle of this, centre lines right down it, okay, and centre lines down those little pegs right there. What remains for us to do on this is to add dimensions, to add a title box and to add view labels. I'm not going to do all of that because I've covered it in previous videos. Uh, just now I'll put the view labels in, I'll put that down there underneath that line, okay, so, plan, elevation, end elevation, dimensions and a title box, probably a title box up here, that would make a bit of sense in this drawing. And that's, that's pretty much us for an orthographic projection.